Reading this essay makes me really excited. Hi guys, welcome or oh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jane or you can call me Dr. Jane. So this is episode one of me sharing my journey to PhD. If you are new to this channel, you are welcome. Trust me, you will not regret being a part of this community. But if you're not new, you already know that I just graduated. I got my PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Rochester here in New York, United States. And now I'm officially a PhD holder, a doctor. So in this um, series, what I'll I'll be doing is sharing my journey to PhD and the aim is to help people who are aspiring to travel abroad to get a master's degree or a PhD and also to help people who are already in school studying to get their PhD. In today's episode what we'll be doing is reading my statement of purpose that is the essay that got me into my school where i got my phd as you may already know your statement of purpose is one of the most important part of your application when you're applying to get admission to study abroad and mind you i got my phd on the full scholarship so when you're applying to study abroad, there are usually different requirements. And most times, almost everyone who's applying will meet those requirements. But what is it that is going to make you stand out? Mind you, you wouldn't say, okay, because I have a 5-point GPA and somebody has a 3.5 GPA that they will leave the person and give me admission. No, as long as you reach the minimum required GPA, you are considered just like everyone else. But what is going to make you stand out? Uh, that one thing is what we are discussing in this video. That one thing is your statement of purpose and that is because your statement of purpose is the most personal part of your application package. It is the part where you have the opportunity to sell yourself to the admission committee. Pardon? Come again. To tell them about yourself, who you are, where you're coming from, what inspires you, what you're um, hoping to be, what you want, what you can offer them, why they are a good fit for you. It's just a place for you to tell your story. And if you want to know how to write an amazing statement of purpose that will get your admission into school, I already made a video for that. I'm going to link that up here. But in this video, what I'm going to be doing is reading my own statement of purpose. Of course, I wrote many, but this one, look at it. It is two pages pages long. This one is the statement of purpose that got me into my school, gave me full scholarship. So let's get into it. I'm just going to be reading it. If you have any question, drop it in the comment section. I respond to my quick comments. I'm going to answer everything. So let's get into it. So I started off by writing my name at the top of the page. I wrote my full name on the one line. And then on the next line, I wrote applicant for a PhD program in chemical engineering at the University of Rochester for fall 2018. So what you're going to do is just replace this with your own um, credentials. Let me see your own, what program are you applying for, what school and what year. And then the next line I wrote statement of purpose. These three lines are in bold. All right, now let's read the body of the statement of purpose. It says, when I was 13, my curious mind stumbled on a journal that proclaimed doom for my country, Nigeria's most important source of energy, crude oil. It said that in about 30 years, crude oil will cease to exist beneath our grounds. That article spurred my interest in search of alternative sources of energy and is responsible for my research drive in renewable energy. Having run some research on biodiesel production and qualification, I would like to further my research into biofuels as an alternative energy source through a PhD in chemical engineering 
at the University of Rochester. So what I just read to you is the first paragraph. If you paid attention, what do you realize that? First of all, I told them where my interest came from, how when I was young, I read this article and this is what they said about my country. And because of that, I've just had this passion of wanting to find an alternative source of energy. So what I've done is to tell them, this is where my interest is coming from. This is why I'm interested in this. And this is what I've done. I said, having done um, research, that means I'm telling them, I've already done some research and that was when I I was an undergraduate so i've already said them having done so and so this is what i want to do and this is where i want to do which is at your university in paragraph two i said in the fourth year of my undergraduate study i interned with the with national research institute for chemical technology narit zaria nigeria as a research assistant. Despite being attached to the pilot plant department, I spent time working in the renewable energy department, gaining valuable experience working on biofuel research and production without halting my deliverables at my assigned department. In particular, I carried out a research titled Production of Biodiesel from Calabash Seed Oil under the supervision of Dr. Ibrahim, the renewable energy team lead research. In this study, I transesterified calabash seed oil using calcium oxide as a catalyst and varied the quantity of the catalyst. I carried out quality control tests such as density, acid content, cetane number, viscosity, yield, and GCMS analysis on the biodiesel. And the results were within standard limits with slight deviations in some cases. The sample with the highest amount of catalyst gave the highest yield of biodiesel. On storing the biodiesel, I noticed that some mass of it settled at the bottom of the container, which implies that there could be an impurity. And as a contribution to the body of knowledge, the research was published in the American Chemical Science Journal. I added the link. What I've done in this paragraph too is to tell them that I have research experience. And mind you, this research experience was what I did when I was in college as an undergraduate student. I didn't say I have research experience, I've done research when I was an undergraduate. No, I gave them details of my undergraduate research, of this research project. And I gave it in such a way that anybody can understand. So you want to show them that you've done something, you know what you're talking about, but at the same time, you don't want it to sound too technical in such a way that someone who is not in that field will not understand. Let's go to paragraph three. So in paragraph three, what I wrote is, in my final year in school, I went further on my research in biodiesel. The settling of biodiesel that I produced during my internship was an unfavorable result, and I wanted to improve on it, on this. Under the supervision of my supervisors, Professor so and so with Professor so and so as his co-supervisor, I worked on improving the quality of the calabash seed oil by degumming it before using it for the production, as this was my assumption of what caused the settling of the biodiesel earlier produced. The topic was biodiesel production from crude and degummed calabash seed oil. And this time, I extracted the oil by myself to ensure that it was not contaminated. I carried out two production of biodiesel, one from crude calabash seed oil and one from degummed calabash seed oil. In the latter, I degummed the oil using autophosphoric acid at 70 to 800 degrees Celsius, and I obtained a sticky gummy liquid. Also, during the first esterification process, a yellowish viscous middle layer was collected. This confirmed that the calabash seed oil contains gum, which caused the settling of the biodiesel and can cause metal contamination. At the end of the two productions, the biodiesel produced from the degummed oil gave better yield with no settling. Also, in my final year in school, the experience gotten during my internship influenced my choice of some courses such as biochemical engineering and polymer science. 
and I excelled in them because I've already seen and handled some of the things that were discussed, such as bioreactors, composites, biofuels, etc. So let's talk about this. If you listen once again, feel free to go back and listen again. If you listen carefully, I didn't just write, okay, when I got to final year, I did research, but instead I told them the reason why I did that research, how I did it, what the results were, and also I mentioned some courses that I've taken. If you paid attention, you will see that there is a chronological aspect of my um, of my essay. I started from my internship in my fourth year, and then I wrote about my final year project, and I didn't just write, but I gave them details in such a way that anyone can understand what I'm talking about. Paragraph four. I intend becoming a lecturer after my graduate program to impact quality knowledge on students and help them achieve their goals. Equipping people intellectually is my passion. It started in my secondary school days as a means of inviting students to join a science club called Junior Engineers, Technicians and Scientists Jet Club. I taught my juniors mathematics and at the end encouraged them to join the club. Lots of students always end up joining the club. When I got to the university, I became a voluntary tutor from my second year to my final year. Tutoring juniors in an organized tutorial class and also rendered private tutorials to my mates. A classmate of mine once said to me after tutoring him, wow, Jane, you are a good tutor. Look at how you made this topic that I've been battling with appear so simple. This statement and its likes that I usually receive mean so much to me, much more than any money in the form of reward could do. I really would love to continue teaching both in grad school and afterwards. So what I did in this paragraph four is to tell them my future career plan, which is I want to become a lecturer, a professor. But sorry, the plan has changed now. <laughs> Anyways, that was the goal then. My goal then was to become a professor, right? So I didn't just say I would like to become a professor when I finish my PhD. But no, I started by telling them how much I love teaching, where that love came from, and some of the things that I've done, how I've taught in tutorials, the compliments I've gotten. I made it so personal. For it's like I'm pretty sure whoever is reading this will be like, like it's really like getting to know me. I made it as personal as possible. So everybody's stories differ so make sure you write it in such a way that it tells you your story this was my story paragraph five upon graduation i went for the mandatory one-year national youth service for nigerian graduates and fortunately for me i was posted to serve as a teaching assistant at the Department of Chemical and Petro Petroleum Engineering in Bayero University, Kanu, BUK, a federal university in the northern part of my country, where I am still serving till date. In BUK, I am opportune to participate in a whole new and exciting part of the teaching profession, such as coordinating laboratory practical for students, supervising examination and tests, grading exams and tests, and assisting lecturers. So in this paragraph, I told them what I was currently doing, which was I was serving as a graduate assistant in a university. And in that place, in that position, I was not allowed to teach. But instead of me saying I'm a copper in such and so place and I'm not allowed to teach, no. But the way I framed it, I told them what I was doing at that moment, which was also exciting. I said, now I have the opportunity to experience another aspect of teaching profession, which is grading exams, grading homework, doing all those things, doing laboratory work, which I was not doing when I was a, an undergraduate student as a tutor. So this is a way of carrying them along through my journey and just telling them my story. And with the way I wrote it, you could see the excitement. Oh, this person loves teaching. If we give her the admission, she'll end up becoming a professor or something like that. So you want to excite them while you're also telling them your story and make them really interested in you. Let's go to the next paragraph. Next paragraph says, being a female, in the field of engineering, where women are thought of as being mentally and physically inferior to their male counterparts, I was determined to stand out and be the best I could. The determination became evident in my academic performance, which made my colleagues hold me in high esteem and always ensured I was made the group leader for my classwork or projects. As tiring as it was, it was a challenge which made me work even harder. 
In my final year, I was the only female and the assistant head of a design project team of 12 and worked with my team for over eight months to design an air fractionation column. The platform gave me time to learn. It taught me how to be a leader who can manage people's differences and drive them towards achieving the set goal. Heading the team was not a walk in the park. And at the end, we completed the project and the least individual's grade of my team was a B. Did you see, did you guys see what I did in this paragraph? So let's talk. In this paragraph, this was me trying to show that I am a leader and I know how to get the job done. But I didn't just say, I am a leader, I've been a team lead in different projects. I told them the story. I told them how, first of all, being a female, in case you don't know, I have a, a, an undergraduate, a master's and a PhD in chemical engineering. And my field is not a field where you typically have lots of women, mostly engineering in general is dominated by men. So I used that to my favor by telling them, being a female in my field, where we are usually looked down upon, I made sure I worked really hard to stand out and because of how hard working I was I was always made a leader in my final year um, design project I was their assistant head and I was the only female I was kind of highlighting the things that would make me really stand out I talked about how I worked so hard and how everybody passed and when you're writing your essay you want to try your best not to say I am this I am that I am that instead tell the most story that shows how you are so if you listen remember you can always rewind back and listen if you listen you will see that I use the story which to tell them how I am a leader instead of just saying I'm a leader and I'm so so good let's go to the next paragraph mind you all these things are just two pages so all this thing i'm reading is just two pages long next paragraph i said in grad school i intend focusing on biofuels i believe it is time nigeria africa and most parts of the world look beyond crude oil and focus on biofuels as well as other renewable energy sources biofuel is a gold mine it is the energy of the future. Also, algae is a species that people discard every day from the environment as waste, not knowing that it is a source of oil. All that is needed is the right technological know-how, intense research and policies, and this I hope to acquire through a PhD in chemical engineering in the University of Rochester to be able to contribute my quota to the energy of the future, biofuels. As an intern, I was part of a research project where my colleagues and I tried to produce biodiesel using algae. We cultured algae and after harvesting it, the result was not encouraging. Sadly, the project was abandoned. Although I do not believe in giving up, I could not single-handedly restart the project because it happened at the end of my internship and I had to return to school. I hope to have the opportunity, laboratory equipment and guidance of experienced faculties such as Professor Wu David and Mukaibo Hitomi to carry out more research in this area and other areas of biofuels at the University of Rochester. I am also open to other research areas such as fuel cells and look forward to working with Professor Jacob Jones as his work on hydrogen fuel cells interests me. So guys, in this paragraph, what did I do? What I did was to tell them what I want to do in their school and the P professors that I would like to work with. I didn't just say, I would like to do research in biofuels and I would like to work with Professor Susu and so because of the amazing research they are doing. No, I told them a story. I told them how, how I believe so much in biofuels and other forms of energy, how I believe that biofuels is the energy of the future, is a gold mine that people need to, the whole world, Africa, Nigeria need to look into. And I've done small research on it, but because I did not complete it, I would like to have the opportunity, the technology, everything in their school to be able to do this research. And I would love to have the guidance of Soso and So Professor 
that is me saying this is what i want to do and i won't like these professors to act as my advisors while i'm doing it but to make sure that i do not limit myself because it's possible that you choose a research area and at the end of the day the professor will not have opening and because of that they won't give the admission what i did in the last part i said i'm also open wait how did i say it i said i am also open to other research areas such as this this and i look forward to having the opportunity to work with professors so and so so i mentioned another two professors abby was it two another one professor another professor and this was me making sure that in case the bio fields that i want to work on is not available that they're not taking in students then they have options be for me so you don't want to limit yourself this is a tip guy use it now the last paragraph the last paragraph what i wrote is with the pool of well-known faculty members unique facilities state-of-the-art laboratories such as the laser energetic laboratories and being among the top schools for biofuel research in the united states I have no doubt that a graduate study at the University of Rochester will be inspiring, benefiting, and also set me in the right path of having more understanding of the subject area and contributing towards a better future of less dependency on crude oil in Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Also, the motto of the University of Rochester, Meloria, is an indication that I will come out of the school ever better to make an impact in the world. Thank you for considering my application. Oh, I don't know if you guys got what I did there. So in the last paragraph, what I did was to praise the university oh, with the pool of amazing faculties, the state of the art laboratories. I, I know that if you guys give me admission, then I'll be able to come out and be ever better. I didn't just say ever better. So where that Meliora and ever better came out from, the Meliora is the motto of the school and it means ever better. So of course, I've done my research on the school before I decided to apply to them. So I used used the motto of the school and the meaning and framed it into the concluding paragraph of my essay. So anybody reading this essay will be like, wow, she has really done her research on this school. She knows us to the point of knowing our motto and using it in her essay. It really means that she will really fit in in our community. Remember, for them to give you admission, they want to make sure that they are a good fit for you and you are also a good fit for them. Reading this essay makes me really excited. So yeah, this is the essay that got me into my school i hope you're listening and to be able to help you if you miss any part feel free to rewind this video and get it and if you have any question leave it in the comment section please i respond to all my questions in the comment section remember this series i promise you guys i'm going to be giving you guys gems i'm going to be giving you guys things that will really help you and for us to communicate put things in the comment section do not send me an email anyways thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like this video subscribe if you've not and share this video to other people who are aspiring to go to grad school it will help them whether it's for masters or for phd they will get some ideas from this video and thank you for being a part of this first episode of my journey to phd and i will see you in the next episode bye